Due to the graphic nature of this podcast, listener discretion is advised. This podcast may contain, but is not limited to, strong language, sexual content, violence, and death. This podcast may not be suitable for listeners under 18. We would like to remind everyone to please be respectful to anyone mentioned in this episode. Hi, I'm Christina. And I'm Crystal. Welcome Welcome to to Crime Crime Night. Night. Tonight's episode is about Lars Matak. So a lot of the sources on this case are in German, and as we don't speak or read German, we can only pull from what we found in English. Um, So we try to find as much as possible, but this is going to be a short case like last time. And for anyone watching this on YouTube, it will be audio only, and I think the next couple will as well, as we are busy with our day job and working lots of lots of hours yeah and it won't let up until probably january lars joachim mitank i'm hoping i say that right (laughs) is born uh february 9th 1986 in berlin germany on june 30th 2014 28 year old lars and four of his friends arrived in varna bulgaria the city of Varna is on the west coast of the Black Sea. Lars and his friends checked into the Golden Sands Resort for a week-long vacation. The resort is located just outside Varna, and everything seemed to be going as planned, and they were having a great time. So nearly a week into their vacation on July 6th of 2014, Lars and his friends went to a local bar in town to have some drinks and watch a football game. And for those in the United States, they mean soccer, not American football. And while there, Lars got into an altercation with fans from a rival team and the argument escalated rather quickly. And despite the fact that they didn't get into an actual physical fight in the bar, um, they did get close to that. And after they left the bar, the group went to go get something to eat. Um, Some sources had mcdonald's as a place they went to go eat um anyways lars didn't want anything so he just kind of waited outside while his friends went in to get something to eat and after waiting for a little bit uh lars ended up just leaving and he kind of disappeared for the remainder of the night his friends hadn't seen him again after that so that's kind of um, kind of common, you know, if you're out with your friends and you don't feel like you want something to eat, you're not going to necessarily wait around for them. Sometimes you're just going to like head back to the hotel or something be like, I'll catch up with you later. You know, that's probably what they were thinking. Yes. Yeah. And I guess it's different for, you know, guys, but like for like women, at least in my experience, <laughs> like we tend not to go out places alone and we'd all be clustered in inside of uh <laughs> mcdonald's whether yes. we were gonna or, eat or if not. somebody was waiting outside they would you know wait within like where we could see each other so they're not all right like in the doorway or yeah. something especially or... in a foreign country um where you don't know anybody mm-hmm. at least you know what i do in my normal daily life is i don't like to you know be alone in places that i'm not familiar with and most people are like that, though, regardless. Yeah, I it's think just... ex- like more, more so women than men, because unfortunately, mm-hmm. um, you know, more things tend to happen to women when they're alone. Or at least reportedly. Yes, at least that's, you know, what's reported. And what people think. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's just, I, maybe it's just that I watch too much true crime, <laughs> <laughs> but... I wouldn't be going off alone to yeah, back no, to the resort <laughs> in a country that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. And late at night and you've been drinking. So, yes. I mean, and everybody that's probably out and about are probably leaving from a bar, been uh-huh. watching the game. And, you know, there's always a, a team that wins and a team that loses. So the team that loses may be angry mm-hmm. and looking for trouble. 
So you never, never know. You just gotta yeah. be very cautious. Mm -hmm. So while his friends waited for him to return for a little while, they de they kind of just decided to go back to the resort. They thought maybe he got tired and, and went back on his own. Um, they kind of figured that he was a capable adult and that he would return at some point. Lars did end up returning to the resort um, the following morning. So he kind of told his friends this this story that he had been beaten up by four men. Um, the four men that he had argued with at the bar the previous night. Um, although he, he did also tell some other friends a different story. So there's, there's two stories coming out from him. Um, they had said that Lars told them that these four men were either hired by the Bulgarians or that they were a group of Russians that attacked them. So it was kind of odd that there was more than one version of the story. Were they the same four men that you had seen earlier or were these different people and how would you... How did you know if they were hired or not? I guess if, if something was said and who an hired argument. them? Well, I right. guess yes, if they something was said, said during an argument, I you know some people say stuff during an argument, and then that sticks in somebody's mm -hmm. head. So then now they he may have this this vision that these men that are coming after him are hired by these guys that he got in the altercation within the bar. Um, as things did not line up, and there was no real explanation what really happened. Or where he ran off to, his friends just kind of chalked it up to him having just a really weird night. However, Lars did tell his friends that regardless of who had beat him up, um, that he did get hit in the head during the fight. His friends did suggest that he go to the doctor to just get checked out just to be on the safe side because he was complaining of an ear injury and they were scheduled to fly back to Germany the next evening and if he had an ear injury flying wouldn't make it worse he did go and see the doctor and he found out that he was injured in his jaw and did actually rupture his eardrum in the fight and the doctor advised him not to fly home because that would make the ruptured eardrum worse from the change in pressure at the high altitude um that you fly at and the doctor actually prescribed him an antibiotic called cefprozil and this was in order to you know prevent his ear from becoming infected so just kind of so it didn't get any worse than it was just precautionary right right get some dust in there dirt in there something mm -hmm. then that could just you know fester mm -hmm. up and become infected easily yes yep and there were actually reports that the doctor originally suggested that he have um, surgery, um, but Lars declined because he would rather have the surgery back home in uh, Germany. Which, which makes sense. Yeah. Total sense. Mm -hmm. I would rather, if I had to get surgery, I would rather be back at home where I'm comfortable and around, you know, a good, like my support system, my yeah. family. and Yeah. Yeah. And the, the doctors that you know. And yeah, the, you speak the same language because yeah, I would rather the language barrier would be kind of mm -hmm. rough, I think too. Yeah, and you're more likely to understand, you know, someone who is more familiar with the culture mm -hmm. that you know you grew up with, and and you know your normal doctor. If if you mm -hmm. see a doctor regularly, they know your history. Mm -hmm. They know more yeah, about they you. Have they know your allergies. All the, they, yeah, they can your files and get all that information. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since flying would make his eardrum worse, he had to actually wait a few days before he was going to return home. So his friends actually offered to stay with him. However, he insisted that he would be fine on his own. And he told them to stick with the original plan and to travel, you know, back home. And, and he'd meet up with them in the next day or two. I think I would have at least one of them, like, stay with me. Like, even, if, like, doesn't have to be all of them, but at least one other person with me because that would just... Make me more comfortable, comfortable. especially mm -hmm. if I'm injured and probably not feeling 100%. I'd rather yeah. have at least one person that I'm familiar with there you with me. trust and help in case of a real emergency. Exactly, yes. Lars checked out of the resort at the same time that his friends checked out. And then he actually went to a less expensive hotel that was actually closer to the airport. And he checked in there. The hotel that he stayed at was the Hotel Color. 
and it was in Verna. So the day after his friends left, he started exhibiting unusual erratic behavior, which was actually recorded by the hotel's CCTV cameras. And while at the hotel color, he appeared to be paranoid and frightened and the cameras recorded him pacing the halls of the hotel and at one point he actually like hid in the elevator for a little while before leaving the hotel for like a couple of hours and returning yeah so very 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 weird Mm -hmm. could you imagine watching this on the camera You know, I don't know if they were watching it while it was happening. Probably but they not. were probably thinking, what the heck is he doing? I would um, think that if they saw it while it was happening, somebody, I would hope somebody would, you know, check on me. Like, are you okay? Because you don't seem, they may have you know, been afraid. Well. They may have been afraid to approach him, though. Yeah. Especially if they don't speak the same language. And you got to think, in a hotel, usually the staff at overnight is very limited. True, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah. then maybe just the one person at the desk. And, mm-hmm. and would you go and approach somebody like that? Because I know I wouldn't. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. I would not. I would I'd probably call to. the manager and be like, um... You need to come here Do now. I need to... <laughs> or, like, call the police or somebody to... You know, just, check ch- like, mm-hmm. a welfare check just to make sure that, like, this kid's okay because he's acting a little, a little funny. Lars actually only stayed at that hotel for one night. And during this stay that he actually called his mother a few times. And when he would talk to her on the phone, he would whisper. Mm -hmm. Like as if he was like afraid that somebody else was like going to hear his conversation. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, she said that he was convinced that those four men um, that he got into a fight with at the bar were going to come to kill him. And he actually even went as far as telling her to cancel all his credit and debit cards. Mm-hmm. So very paranoid behavior. Like he was acting as if somebody was out to get him. Yeah, after him. Like mm-hmm. his life was, he probably believed that his life was legitimately in danger. Mm-hmm. Even Could if you it imagine wasn't. being the mom though, getting these frantic phone calls? Because mm-hmm. you know he's he's probably in a severe panic at this point. Yes. And being, and she, what is she gonna do? She's he's so in far a, away. Yeah, he's in a completely different country. She can't just like go check on him. And yeah. you know, the only like she just has to make sure she can stay in contact via the phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, at some point, he did actually text his mom to ask about the antibiotic that he was prescribed. So he may have been feeling that there was something going on. He may have noticed the change in his... Yeah, he's probably... like, Because, I mean, I would imagine, like, that, you know, if you're paranoid, like, you realize that you're yeah, more yeah. paranoid than usual. And so, yeah, he was probably... He seemed like he was concerned about his own behavior at this point as well. Yeah, and if he to had the point any, where he, he was asking about, you know, the antibiotics. Yeah, he noticed the change in himself. And if he mm-hmm. if he is a normal, anxious kind of a person, and then he's got all these other thoughts going on in his head, mm-hmm. it just amplifies it so much more. On July eighth, Lars took a taxi to the Varna Airport. After arriving at the airport, he actually texted his mom to let her know that he had arrived there. Now, so while, I'm sure that was relieving to her to yes. be like, okay, so he's in the airport. He's almost home. Yes. I'm sure like she was thinking, okay, as soon as he gets on the plane, I won't have to worry because right. then he'll be at the airport mm-hmm. next time and I can go get him. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So while at the airport, Lars actually visited the doctor that was there and he wanted to discuss his ear injury just to make sure that it was healed enough that he can actually fly home the doctor actually noticed that Lars was acting very strange and he was exhibiting erratic behavior he said that Lars seemed to be very nervous and he asked questions about the medication that he was taking so once again he's he's asking asking about somebody else Mm -hmm. so he was clearly concerned about um, how it was making him feel or was he thinking that Maybe they gave him something else. I don't know. Maybe he, uh, he was so paranoid that right. he thought it was something else that they were giving him. Mm-hmm. That this isn't an antibiotic. Mm-hmm. This is 
that's maybe why he keeps mm -hmm. asking about it i wonder yeah i don't know despite being told that he could fly home lars continued to behave nervously so during the conversation that he was having with the doctor um another man that was working on a construction project in the airport actually stopped in to the doctor's the area he actually heard um overheard lars saying that i don't want to die here i have to get out of here and at this point he fled the airport and he was only wearing a t-shirt jean shorts and sneakers and he left the duffel bag that he had actually brought into the airport with him which had his cell phone his wallet his passport so all his identification everything he would need um he left everything behind and just kind of took off just so he running. literally left with just the clothes on his back yes and there is um there are videos out there of the airport um cctv of him you know walking in seeming perfectly fine and then just suddenly just running out like just he's yeah like sprinting out yeah, of and the then you airport. gotta think though if you if you do watch that video you can't see everything you can't see him going into the medical facility you can't see what's going on in there either so is this really what happened is this... well but still he is you know he wasn't as afraid when he walked in there as he walked out mm -hmm. yeah but what else was out there what else was there maybe these four guys that he thought were coming after him maybe he thought he seen them there could have i don't know who knows then nobody knows why he just kind of took off yeah he got spooked uh, somehow mm -hmm. seems like and so while he ran out multiple cameras that were in um like focused on the parking lot area actually recorded him running across the parking lot before he climbed a fence and ran into a meadow he ended up um, disappearing into an adjacent sunflower field near the Bulgarian National Highway A2. And he actually has never been seen since. So literally missing without a trace. Yes. Yeah. So he just kind of took off in another country and has never been seen again. And they just feel for his mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got to be an awful feeling to, to know that your son could either be out there alive or dead and there's no closure. Yeah, and this the worst was, thing. what, seven years ago? Yeah. So she's been... Holding on hope for seven years, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Every so often, internet researchers and other concerned citizens report sightings of who they believe to be Lars. One truck driver claims to have given Lars a lift in Brandenburg in 2019. However, a follow-up by the police found nothing. When a man with no identification or recollection of who he was turned up in Porto Velho, Brazil in 2016, many people thought he could be Lars. However, it eventually turned out to be a missing Canadian citizen, Anton Palipa. So other theories include Lars running away to start a new life, which hmm. don't you think like if he was gonna run away to start a new hmm. life he wouldn't have acted you know strangely in the airport he would there's have just, just kind so of disappeared that, i would it just think. doesn't add up to me there's just so many things that just don't add up i mean he was having a great time with his friends and and then all of a sudden as soon as this injury took place and he started taking the antibiotic things became very bizarre i just i just can't see that being a, a, a thing but you never know um, some other people theorize that he was either smuggling drugs or possibly experimenting um, with drugs that he had never taken before however nothing was reported to be found in his luggage although hmm. you know i think he you know it's always possible that he could have been you know drugged without his knowledge and had adverse effects well, being out at a bar, you know, people can slip something in your drink if you're not looking. If you turn yeah. away, walk, mm -hmm. go to the bathroom. I mean, yeah, it happens that, you know, people get slip drugs without realizing Slipping it. On roofy. If, especially if they're at a bar that was in like a touristy area, there may be um, people there with not so good intentions. Mm -hmm. So another theory is that he could have had an undiagnosed concussion that 
you know, led to his strange and erratic behavior from the fight, which also, you know, could have been just the ear injury as well. So Mm -hmm. it's not just concussions that could cause, you know, weird behaviors that um, eardrum rupture could as well. Lars' mother, as well as the Bulgarian and German doctors, suspect suspect that Lars' unusual behavior was a result of a rare side effect from the Cefprozil that he was prescribed. Cefprozil is known as a cephalosporin antibiotic that works to stop the growth of bacteria. Cephalosporin has been known to induce psychotic side effects, including hallucinations and paranoia, which are very rare, but it could be a thing. Yeah, it, it does, you him. know, it does happen, mm-hmm. and especially if maybe he's more sensitive to, like, his body mm-hmm. is more sensitive to um, the side effects. Because I know that some people get like every side effect, other people don't get any. So mm-hmm. you know, some people are more sensitive to side effects than others. So if he's generally more sensitive to medication side effects than that you know he would be would be more likely to get a rare side effect um like me i'm very super sensitive to to medicines i get the the weird side effects from them i get the you know the rare stuff a lot so i always have to be careful on what i take i'm lucky in that i don't get a lot of the side effects i get knock on the table i get all of them (laughs) So, which I think that's probably the more likely of that is that either the antibiotic or the eardrum injury or maybe even a combination of both of them together is probably what caused the, you know, mm-hmm. strange behavior that yeah, he's there's exhibiting. there's just a lot mm-hmm. of theories out there. I mean, it's, you know, everybody has their their thoughts on what they think could happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Some more out there than others. But... Right. You're right. Mm-hmm. So, hence why they're known as theories. Yes. Yeah, and especially since, you know, we don't have an answer at this point. It's not like he was visiting a doctor after this and they took him off the antibiotic and then it worked and he went back to normal. Yeah, but don't you think, okay, so if he was on this antibiotic and he had taken it for, you know, a day and a half or what have you, and now this happened where he got spooked and he took off running, don't you think that the side effects would eventually wear off? You know what I mean? Is that a possibility? I just, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I would think, yeah, the, the side effects, especially, you know, seven years, yeah. it would wear off. But, you know, you never know what happened to him after he left the airport. Did mm-hmm. he get it, get it, like, have another injury? Did something else happen to him? Well, maybe while he jumped the fence, he made his ear jump worse or something. Maybe yeah. something happened and he could have even you know, develop something, like hit his head on something after he left the airport and developed some sort of amnesia. Right. Or and I know like with that. people with amnesia, you could suffer from long term amnesia and it can last for years and years. And then, you know, he could have, you know, had this whole new life mm-hmm. invented that he had no, no path to follow. Mm-hmm. So he could have started a whole new life. I mean, that could be a thing. It could mm-hmm. be a possibility that he suffered from basically amnesia even yeah he so seems like he seems close to his mom mm-hmm. so yeah, i yeah, would think that at the very least i would hope that he would you know if he remembered mm-hmm. his life that he would at least contact her or maybe he's been living this other life so long that he you know doesn't yeah but he's like if, we don't have that relationship anymore even if you if you See yourself on the news? I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm sure this was out there. This was, mm-hmm. you know, out there. And if you see yourself in the, in the news, you'd be like, hey, that kind of looks like me. Mm-hmm. Maybe that is me. Or maybe yeah. he didn't have a TV. Or... And I think that's why one of the theories is that he decided to run away. And maybe yeah. he did after this all went down. And maybe he, after he took off, he was like, you know what? Screw it. I mean, he's, he's probably had, you know, his, his own life. He probably had you know, work and he probably had, you know, a, a significant other and then his, his family. And so he probably had a lot going on for him. Maybe it was very stressful. Something happened. Something was going on. You just don't know. Yeah. You don't know, you know, that he could have been dealing with something that he didn't tell any of his friends or family about and was just dealing with it on his own. And he had a break, mm-hmm. a mental break. While it remains possible that he was really being pursued, it seems more likely that either the head injury 
of the side effect or the antibiotic triggers something known as a psychotic episode. So around 10,000 people go missing every year in Germany. Despite investigating Lars's disappearance for years, um, Germany's federal criminal police office has been unable to find any concrete leads um, leading to his whereabouts and his mother continues to seek leads in her son's disappearance and has made numerous radio and tv appearances in both germany and bulgaria over the years um, searching for her son if you do have any information on the whereabouts of lars natank please contact German police at the phone number that we'll put in the description box or send an email to guatag.findat underscore Lars at web.de. That's G-U-E-T-I-G dot F-I-N-D-E-T underscore L-A-R-S at W-E-B dot D-E. We will also link the Facebook page and website that are on his missing flyer in the description box as well. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. We will be releasing a new episode every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central. You can find any sources used listed in the description box below. Good, good night! night.